Hey, what's up everyone? Andrew from American Musical Supply here. In this video, I'm going to give you a little bit of a session breakdown of a demo song that I recently recorded for the Epiphone Joe Bonamassa 1960 Normburst Les Paul guitar. The track's kind of like an Albert King style soul blues, a uh, little bit retro. Uh, but the reason I'm doing this session breakdown is because I used the Antelope Audio Discrete 4 Synergy Core along with the Antelope Audio uh, Edge Solo Modeling Microphone to uh, record this track and to mix this track. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit of the process and a little bit about what this hardware can do. This interface, the Discrete 4 Synergy Core, has four microphone preamps, and it also has a DSP core in there. Uh, so it has the capability of running plugins for both recording and for mixing. And um, when used in conjunction with any of Antelope's modeling microphones, in my case, I was using the Edge Solo modeling microphone, which is a cardioid-only uh, large diaphragm condenser. It's a smaller microphone. And this, uh, when used in conjunction with the Discrete 4 Synergy Core interface, you're able to run microphone emulations as well. So you can print those emulations or you can print the dry signal of the microphone and affect it using the plugin in your door once you're done and when you're in the mixing phase. So I'm going to show you that right now. Um, I recorded the kick drum using the Edge Solo microphone. So I had four mics on the drums. I had two overheads, a snare mic, and a kick mic. The Edge Solo was my kick mic. And I'm just going to show you, take you through a couple of the different emulations that are available. I recorded it dry, and uh, here we go. Let's take a listen. All right, so this is the Edge Solo Dry. Let's check out the Vienna 112. Minnesota 20. And finally, FET 47. So there were three classic kick drum microphones um, that were being emulated by the Edge Solo uh, mic. If you were listening on good quality headphones or speakers, you should have heard a difference between the Vienna 112 and the Minnesota 20, and then also the Berlin 47 FET. I decided to go with the Berlin 47 FET for my mix. Uh, I really like the sound of that mic on kick drums, super punchy and does have a little bit of low end heft to it. So that's what I decided to use. Let's move along to the bass now and check out the bass. When I was tracking this, I recorded through an amplifier and mic'd that amplifier up using the Berlin V563 emulation, and I printed that emulation. And then I also recorded a DI track that I thought, well, maybe I could use the uh, one of the Antelope plugins in Mixdown to um, hear what that sounds like. So let's take a look at that right now. I'm gonna pull up this this bass track. Let's check out the mic damp sound. All right, now we'll go to the straight DI with no amp emulation. All right, then the amp emulation kind of had a lot of high end in there because I was mixing these two tracks together, but let's check it out. You know, we could change the sound up. change the mic position, the mic types, and then when you blend the tracks together, we get this. So a nice fat bass sound. So let's take a listen to the lead guitar. The lead guitar was recorded using a Supro Blackjack amplifier. The guitar was plugged into uh, the, the input that bridges the channels to channel one and two on the amp. And basically everything was just turned up to get a nice, dynamic, touch-responsive, pushed sound. Um, the emulations that I was recording with is using the 67 emulation for the microphone and then a Neve-style preamp emulation. And I was printing those emulations through the Discrete for Synergy Core. So let's take a look 
uh, let's take a listen to that now, rather, without any mix effects on. And I'm going to engage the program equalizer that I used. So I was taming a little bit of the high end. thought there was maybe a little bit too much presence for the, to sit in the track. And overall, you can hear it's a nice fat sound. For the rhythm guitar, this was recorded using a Vox AC30. And on the Edge solo microphone, I was running the 441 emulation. So I was emulating a dynamic mic. Um, in the mix, I used uh, a couple of plugins from the Antelope uh, plugin suite here. I used the NEU W495 equalizer along with a FET style compressor limiter. So let's take a listen without any processing and then I'll engage that processing. Here we go. All right, here's the EQ. The only other instrument I recorded was organ. I recorded that using the Native Instruments Vintage Organs plugin. And in Mixdown, I used the Antelope Stay Levin plugin, uh, which you can see on the screen here, to just contain the level a little bit and just uh, make, it sit, make the organ sit a little bit better in the mix and uh, even fatten it up a little bit. All right, moving on to the mix bus. We'll take a look at the processing I used there. I was using the um, this Altec style compressor amplifier, just to give a bit of a vintage flavor into a tape emulation plugin, then into an EQ, and then a distressor style compressor. And uh, for final limiting, I was using the Isotope um, final mix plugin, uh, which unfortunately they don't make anymore, but it's a great plugin. Um, so yeah, let's um, take a listen just to the the full mix with processing. <laughs> So there's a quick breakdown of this demo session, hopefully illustrating some of the capabilities of the Antelope Audio Discrete 4 Synergy Core interface and the Edge Solo Microphone. So if you're interested in checking out either of these pieces or even the Epiphone Joe Bonamassa 1960 Normburst Les Paul guitar, you can head on over to AmericanMusical.com. Thanks for watching and don't forget to click like and subscribe.